Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. We are here today with the fabulous David Harwood, General Badass, who is going to get a lesson in PVC pipe because today we are building our vacuum table for the uh, big SR100 sheet router and part of that is the chimney for outside and we need an exhaust stack for the exhaust from the vacuum pumps because they make a lot of noise and we want to take that all the way up to the roof and point it straight up. So we have to glue a lot of PVC pipe and that is the theme of the day. Mm. So I figured I'd take a minute and teach you how to do that and we get to build your little sub-assembly. Okay. So what you'll need is purple primer yep. and PVC cement. This comes in like 50 different flavors. Mm. The colors mean something. Okay. You have to read it in the aisle and figure out which one you want. There's viscosities, there's speeds, there's some are for different types of plastic, it's a whole thing. But what we need is a couple short pieces of pipe. Now you figure you've got about three quarter inch engagement between half and three quarter engagement. Right. It's not rocket science and this is a non-critical dimension because we don't care if those are budding together or if they're this far apart, it doesn't matter. Right. As a rule, you don't want them tight together mm -hmm. on any, anywhere where you don't want it to leak. Because you'll never be you sure, yeah, you don't know if you got enough in. Okay. So you want to leave like an eighth. For right. this, because it's an exhaust side and one end of this is going to atmosphere, if it leaks, we don't care. Right. But we want to kind of do it right. So I'm going to say we've got about two inches of pipe there. So we'll cut like two and a half down here. Yep. And one of the cool things with working with PVC like this is you just hold it up and say, okay, I want to be about there. And you draw a mark on the pipe. And you're going to be a little long but it doesn't matter. Just always go a little long. You don't care. Now we need a piece for the cap. I'll do them separately. Try and do this professionally. So this, you know, you love. It's easy. Simple chop saw work. Push it down a little bit. A chop saw cuts PVC like butter. Make sure that you deburr your sides. Sometimes you get a little thing sticking up or whatnot. Um, just break them off, simple. And another nice thing about PVC is you can test fit everything and make sure it's good. So that's, we've got a quarter inch gap, so we're set there. Cool. Now we want the bottom one, which is gonna be the cap plus there. The little dusty, swarfy things, mm -hmm. you want to get out of there as right. much as you can. Cleanliness is important. So there's our assembly. That's what we're going for. So yep. it's really simple. This is actually, we want more than that. And we need to figure out how long this has to be mm. once it's mounted. So I won't glue this, right. but what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll glue this one, take you through it, and then you'll make like picture. All right. So we'll just worry about this side for now. Something important to remember in doing this is anything you do this on is going to be forever permanently stained. Yep. So play accordingly. Um, if you could please hand me the paper towel. Because this is a very, very messy process and parts of it have to be very clean. So I take a couple of paper towels. I actually have in my toolkit a dedicated old beach towel that I use for this. Um, this will stain tile even. Like if you have a white tile floor and you mm -hmm. get the, the purple stuff is the part that stains. If yep. you get the purple stuff on the tile floor, it's purple mm -hmm. forever. It'll also stain your skin, but not forever. Right. Maybe a couple weeks. Your skin regrows. Yeah, your skin, skin, skin fixes that. Oh, hey. I highly recommend this tool which was all adjusted specifically for Moose's things, and I'm gonna screw it up. The lids on these cans go on impressively hard. So that is the best thing for that ever. Yay, vice grips. Keep your cans on the towel. Right. Okay. Um, just loosen them, but leave the lids on. Mm -hmm. Now the joints are simple. Time is a factor because the glue dries right now. 
There is there is no work time. There's no pot time. There's nothing. There's no time. Um, the cleaner stuff, the, the purple is a primer. Mm -hmm. Now the, per the reason for the purple, because you can glue them together without the primer. Mm -hmm. It will work. Mm -hmm. And for this application, it would probably be fine forever. But the pipe is very smooth and non-porous. The, mm. the purple is, think of it like an acid. Right. It eats the inside of the pipe. It actually melts it a little tiny bit. And what this does is it etches the inside of the pipe. It leaves it with a, a rougher surface. And it's not rough right. like that you're actually going to see or feel, but it's rougher. At the, at the microscopic level, it's what lets the glue have little holes to work into. Right. So you just swab it with purple just like that, and then stick it in. There's nothing to it. Now with this, it's the same thing. Wipe off your brush a little bit because there's going to be a lot of it. And then I hold it with two fingers from the inside mm -hmm. and run it right around and just go right around. If you see any spots where it pools up, because at first it might pool up a little bit, mm -hmm. like uh, glass on a windshield, mm -hmm. then just uh, scrub that spot with a brush. That's really thin. Did that need shaking before we started? Or this? No, is this is, this is naturally really, really thin. Okay. You, you don't have to shake it. You, you can, it won't hurt it, but okay. no, it's, it should be like alcohol thin. But you can okay. see how this pools up right. a little bit like that. Yep. That if, but if you scrub the spot, if you go around a little bit and give it a second, what this is doing is cleaning off any oils like skin oil or manufacturing mold release oils or anything like that. So it's like when we're epoxying the floor and water will pool away from yep. areas. Yep. And this is very similar to when, we're, when we epoxy the floors. The first thing we have to do is the acid wash to the floors, the big okay. citric acid cleaning. Yep. And that super cleans and etches the floor. Mm -hmm. This is your acid wash. Okay. okay. And I've just... That's way more than you need, but I was talking and not really paying attention. Right. So you just let that dry, and it dries out and evaporates in just a couple seconds. While that's doing that, put the lid back on your can. Don't tighten it down, but keep the lid on the can. Because if you leave the lid off the can, you will knock the can over, and, <laughs> and purple leg, purple floor, because that never Sounds happens. Sounds like you've done this before. I have done this once or twice. So now we got this last piece. And it's the same thing. You clean all your swarf out and clean the swarf out of the whole piece, not just the side you're working on. Right. Um, but get it, get it all wiped down. Okay. Get your purple stuff as opposed to the Sunny D. You got your purple stuff. And you just stick it in and just whoop, and just go around a few times like that. And that's it. And don't worry about if it runs or anything. That's why you just set it down on your towel. It's okay. You just, and it's fine. This piece here is totally ready to go. This piece good. Everything's set. So that's cool. We're done there. We can set that aside. Now for the glue, this is where you have to have everything ready. You mm -hmm. have, make sure you have all your parts primed. So we've got our female side, our male sides, and our other female side. We know exactly how it's going to go together, and everything's ready. Now, there's a bunch of debate. Everybody who teaches this does it differently. Um, this is how I do it. It may not be the official textbook way, but this is how I do it. I take my glue, run it around inside. Okay, use, you can't use too much glue. Okay, take the female piece, push it in, and give it a turn. At least a quarter turn, but push hard and give it a quarter turn. Then you know you're all the way in. Okay. Leave it alone. It's done. And if you're doing this on a live system, like, uh, like if this was a real drain pipe, mm -hmm. at this point, in the time it takes you to finish that and walk across the room and turn the water and, and like flush the toilet, it's dry. Wow. It's, it's good. It's not cured. It's going to take a couple hours to truly cure mm -hmm. because the way this works is it actually melts the plastic a little bit. Now, some like people... Like model glue. Yeah, like model glue. This, this is a, a solvent cement type weld, okay? Now, some people say put the glue on the male side. Some people say put it on the female side. Some people say put it on both sides. That's how I was raised with both yeah, sides. I just I always put on a female side, and I've never had a problem. Okay. And I've done this once or twice. But that is your proper finished solvent welded cemented joint. Cool. So um, all the usual caveats apply. Use this only in a well ventilated area. 
Um, it will mess you up, it will get you high, it will give you brain damage. This is not a good way for recreational pharmaceuticals. Um, don't do it while you're smoking a cigarette. Read and follow and understand all the safety instructions that are written on the products that you are using. And don't be an idiot. Okay, so yeah, that's what you need to know. And I would like to point out that I made it through this entire video and I do not have purple hands. Okay, I have no, I got, got a little bit on table, but I have no purple hands. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. I'm Dave Harwood. As always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.